on the theme COVID-19 issues, policies, and challenges. On this occasion, I feel honored to have an opportunity to welcome you all who are attending the first lecture of this series. On behalf of both the departments, I welcome our respected head of CUH family, Professor R.C. Kohardi, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Central University of Haryana for accepting our invitation and joining us. At the same time, I express my sincere thanks and heartfelt gratitude to you, sir, for being a continuous source of inspiration and motivation for each of uh, the faculty member of CUH in doing all such kind of activities based on research, teaching, and social issues. Thanks a lot, sir. We again welcome you, sir. I, further, it's a moment of uh, great pleasure and honor to all of us that today we have one of the most distinguished and great personalities of India, the respected Sudhendu Jyoti Sinaji, advisor of Niti Ayog, the apex think tank of government of India. Sir, on behalf of the Department of Geography and Department of Political Science of CUH, I welcome you and convey regards and gratitude from the core of my heart for accepting our invitation in such a panic and terrible period and sparing your valuable time to enlighten us on the mitigation of COVID-19. Thank you very much, sir. Again, we welcome you, sir. I also welcome all deans, Professor Sanjeev Kumar, Professor Rajesh Malik, Professor Neelam Sangwan, Professor Dinesh Gupta, Professor Anand Sharma, and all heads, my senior colleagues, teaching fraternity of CUH who could spare their valuable time to be here. Most importantly, I also welcome all the participants who are attending this lecture through uh, YouTube or through WebEx from different parts of the country to make this event worthwhile. I hope you all would enjoy the lecture and be benefited from it. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would request head of the Department of Political Science and Program Director of this lecture series, Professor Rajveer Singh Dalal, sir, to give an introduction about this. Sir. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Sir. Achha, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, really thankful uh, to Dr. Vinodji and Manish ji who uh, uh, came forward in collaboration with our department, uh, Department of Political Science, to organize this international lecture series on such a very important, relevant and contemporary issue that is the title of the series is COVID-19 issues, policies and challenges. So far, it is the first one lecture in the series in which uh, very distinguished speakers from Niti Ayog, advisor from Niti Ayog, Sri uh, uh, Sivendu uh, Ji uh, Jyoti Sinhaji is available with us. Uh, as uh, I would like to inform all the participants here that under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor R.C. Kuhad, we are organizing a number of such series that may be the lecture series both national and international level. Simultaneously, we organized uh, workshop webinars on very contemporary, relevant, and recent issues in different departments, as well as in different faculties. So far, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, is concerned. Uh, in recent, uh, just two days before, we are in a seminar, and some students or other participants, they give comments to us. Sir, when other universities are not in a position to conduct the classes regularly, you are going to organize such events almost daily, hardly any day passes when we are not organizing one activity or the others. 
and by all the departments on a very relevant topics. So the credit goes to our honorable vice chancellor who always motivate us, who always uh, remains behind us a, uh, a moral force uh, as well as who guides the university in such a, uh, I can say, pandemic situations. Dear participants, as we know that the almost one and a half years has gone, this pandemic has disturbed or put a havoc over the world. Even developed nations, they could not sustain or save themselves from it. Today's our main issue is mobilizing international assistance for mitigating COVID-19 problem. I think it is a very relevant topic. We have to see and I uh, hope that uh, the speakers of the day, they, uh, particularly Sina Sahab, he will point out being the advisor of our think tank of the government of India, ki what efforts we have made at national and international level. All of us knows that the remedy uh, of this pandemic is to a greater extent is that of awareness. The government started 3T programs, tracing or tracking, we can say, testing as well as treatment. Simultaneously, we have to say ki what are the other curative measures as well as preventive. Preventive means what awareness or how we can create awareness among the people, say, maybe that of social distancing, maybe use of sanitizers or other things. So I hope that uh, uh, the different issues in this series will be discussed later on. So our university is the, uh, I think it is the first one in this direction to organize such a series on these issues to create awareness among the students as well as other uh, participants. Maybe the, uh, our motive is to create such mass awareness. So this, uh, I uh, once again thanks to all our esteemed teams who are uh, organized this program as well as our honorable speaker of the day, honorable vice chancellor and all our faculty members, non-teaching staff. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. May I now request Dr. Jitendra Kumar, assistant professor in the Department of Geography, to introduce our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, sir. Good morning to all of you. Thank you, Gloria, ma'am, to provide me this great opportunity to introduce our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, sir, who is eminent scholar, scientist, and academician at world scale. Sir, name has been listed uh, in the list of top 2% scientists worldwide by Stanford University. Honorable Vice-Chancellor has served number of reputed positions Recently, sir has served as a member of the University Grant Commission. He is also the chairman of Indian Academy of Microbiological Sciences and has served as the joint director of Institute of Lifelong Learning, University of Delhi. He has been felicitated as fellow of Academy of Microbiological Sciences, fellow of National Academy of Sciences India, fellow of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, and fellow of Biotech Research Society. His major research area is crop bioproduct biotechnology comprising of wood, degrading enzyme production and their application in bio-leaching, bio-bleaching, bio-rating, bio-dinking and production of animal feed and bioethanol. He has developed an eco-friendly process for bleaching of paper pulp. It is an improved process for bioconversion of wheat straw into nutritionally enriched and digestible animal feed following solid state fungal fermentation and an innovative process of the production of bioethanol. Sir has completed more than 18 projects funded by DBT, DST, UGC, CSIR, etc. He has four patents to his credit in different areas of crop bioproduct, biotechnology, and has authored more than 200 publications and also edited five books. The total citation of Scopus is more than 6,000, H index is 44, and I10 index is 93, reflect the quality and excellence of research at worldwide. 
सर इज चेयरमैन मेंबर ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल एकेडमिक काउंसिल कोर्ट गवर्निंग बॉडी गवर्निंग बोर्ड वेरियस यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड ऑल्सो सर्व एज मेंबर ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल एंड गवर्निंग बॉडी ऑफ यूजीसी नेक मोर ओवर सर्व एज सर्व एज मेंबर एक्सपर्ट ऑफ एनिमल टास्क फोर्सेज बायोमिशन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड स्टेयरिंग कमेटी फॉर द सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस प्रोग्राम ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड फॉरेस्ट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एट सी ई एम डी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली सर हैज ऑल्सो बीन द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ माइक्रो बायोलॉजिस्ट ऑफ इंडिया टू थाउजेंड इलेवन इज एडिटर ऑफ साइंटिफिक रिपोर्ट्स नेचर पब्लिशिंग ग्रुप्स जर्नल ऑफ सस्टेनेबल एनर्जी एंड इंडियन जर्नल ऑफ माइक्रो बायोलॉजी सर हैज ऑल्सो सर्व एज एसोसिएट एडिटर ऑफ एनल्स ऑफ माइक्रो बायोलॉजी एंड गेस्ट एडिटर ऑफ स्पेशल इश्यूज ऑफ बायोडिग्रेडेशन एंड थ्री बायोटेक जर्नल्स बिसाइड ही इज रिव्यूवर ऑफ वेरियस इंटरनेशनल जर्नल सर एज एन रेसिपेंट ऑफ लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड ए एम आई टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन द प्रेस्टिजियस प्रोफेसर जी एस रंगा स्वामी मेमोरियल अवार्ड टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन फ्रॉम एसोसिएशन ऑफ माइक्रो बायोलॉजिस्ट ऑफ इंडिया ए एम आई डॉक्टर जी बी मांजरीकर अवार्ड ए एम आई प्लेटिनियम जुबली लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन एटसेट्रा सर हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मॉडल करिकुलम फॉर यू जी सी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द चॉइस डिस्क क्रेडिट सिस्टम फॉर मोर देन हंड्रेड अंडर ग्रेजुएट कोर्सेज in 2014 drafting ugc regulation 2018 on minimum qualification for appointment of teachers and other academic staff in university and colleges and measure for the maintenance of standards in higher education and guidelines for examination and new session calendar as chairperson of the committee now i humbly request to our honorable vice chancellor sir to please address the inaugural session of international lecture series sir please honorable shri sudendu jyoti sinha ji advisor niti ayog government of india dr rajbir dalal ji other deans of different faculties head of the departments my other faculty colleagues students research students and faculty from other universities who have joined say today's webinar to listen to sri sinha ji ladies and gentlemen i am really grateful to sri sinha ji for accepting our invitation to speak to all of us about a very important issue which is i think that of most importance as not only for our nation but say for the whole world sena saab i would certainly would like to bring to your notice that this university as per the government direction has already decided and developed the calendar for various activities to celebrate amrit azadi ka amrit mahotsav but in addition to that and that we have been celebrating say since the month of march and uh, today in the series i think it is the 10th or 11th uh, say program in addition to that only last week we have decided that this is not enough that you design or finalize a kind of calendar for various activities but when the whole year we have been uh, uh, say emphasizing uh, on celebrating azadi ka amrit mahotsav then i think uh, it is the duty of all the departments and the faculty to know about the kind of developments have taken place in their own subject and they should have a complete uh, say the directory of that and uh, that will be a good way of say getting a kind of literature and the status even that will help say in mapping the good quality of academic development good quality of research development and of course the kind of the waste kind of say the addition in the literature and if you could bring out together the 75 years progress about each subject of our university itself like say near about we do have 34 to 35 say different disciplines and of course likewise the other universities may also work on that 
Uh, that will give, say, I think uh, our 75 is the, the progress in front of us and uh, we can think of where we were, where we are and where we have to go. This way that will help in planning the future program, that future kind of the academics and certainly it will help in deciding the future course of research and especially uh, say, say, I think uh, uh, we have been working on uh, uh, execu executing our national education plan, which we have developed in the university. And ours is the first university to have a complete plan to be executed. And we have started, uh, say, executing it in a, in a phased manner. And when we have complete status, say, before us, we will be able to design the quality and the better, uh, say, quality curriculum. That, that we have been doing at present. And uh, for today's, uh, say, seminar, which, is, uh, uh, which has been uh, organized by Department of Geography on mobilizing international assistance for mitigating COVID pandemic, uh, I think uh, it's a very pertinent, uh, say, topic. And uh, you have, say, chosen and... Uh, selected, uh, say, Sri Sinaji, who has a better, uh, say, understanding about various issues and policies and, of course, the challenges, what, say, our country, not only our country, but specifically we are more concerned about our country we have been facing. And you all are eager to, say, listen to him, but, say, you have given me the responsibility. Let me also speak a bit what I know and what I say, perceive, say, dear friends, you all know that corona disease, which is commonly known as COVID-19 pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2, which in the, say the full, if you talk about severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, has now engulfed the whole world with its effects for more than a year and a half. Dear friends, you all know very well that the first outbreak of COVID-19 could be traced back to the city of Wuhan in China in early December 2019. Since 2019 to this day, the whole of the mankind has been working under, of course, the circumstances, but I think very cooperatively with each other to tackle this unprecedented situation and suggest solutions to overcome the same. Because from the various sectors, government, central government, state government, the various uh, organizations, uh, even the institutional education, educational institutions and individual, I think they have been participating in this program. In this direction, if we talk about India has also met with its own peculiar set of challenges and issues. And simultaneously, our union government under the dynamic leadership of, say, Sri Narendra Modi ji, along with the experts from various uh, fields, scientists and pharmaceutical companies have been involved in the right earnest to come up with the steps and policies and lead the world in controlling the pandemic. Dear friends, if we talk a bit about the various issues and challenges, uh, the first case in India was confirmed on 30th January 2020. Italy and Spain had their first cases confirmed a day later. The USA and its first case confirmed on 20th of January. After almost two months, India has had only 20 COVID-19 confirmed deaths as against 9,000 in Italy, 5,000 in Spain and 1,200 in USA. Since the tracing of first case to this day, India has come along through first wave of COVID-19 and currently during, currently going through the second wave, which again, we know very well, we have been experiencing and we have been watching carefully that the second wave has been more fatal. But certainly we are on the way to control this as well. Ladies and gentlemen, among the numerous issues, India has been dealing with the issues at various fronts in the form of economic impact, where the downturn has greatly affected people from the lower socioeconomic stratum during this pandemic. 
in terms of socio-cultural challenges, the social fabric of India thrives on interdependence, both emotional and economic, with families, relatives, and friends. Close physical interactions, dear friends, like living in crowded housing and other places you know very well, like our old street systems in villages and old market also with a very, very narrow roads. These kind, and of course, in addition to that, our habit, you can say, or our tradition also, that there is a large gathering in our marriages or any other, like say, the kind of the religious uh, functions or any other, say, the gathering. These are commonly, you can say that these are the deter deterrent to social distancing and that we have very clearly, very obviously, I think, uh, come across during this pandemic situation or the spread of pandemic. Therefore, we have to be very, very careful and we have to make people aware that having a social distance or physical distance, whatever you like to call it, I think we need to follow that. But when it comes to the impact on health, prevalent diseases and the ever-increasing population becomes the major challenge in India's case. Morbidity and uh, mortality due to COVID-19 in India are largely attributable to comorbid conditions, that is, non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, or cardiovascular disease. You might be watching every day different channels on TV and uh, the, our doctors have been advising you. Another major important health issue which has been evidently emerging in the course of this pandemic is the looming crisis of mental health. Yes, because of the, I think, the panic and automatically the panic, say, is created. It's not that somebody is creating, but say, I think automatically when you know about so many, say, say diseased persons and the, so many, say, the problems, automatically you get a panic. Increase in chronic stress, anxiety, depression, alcohol dependence, and to an extent, uh, the domestic violence, say, sometimes. And all these have been reported as a consequence of the nationwide lockdown. On the other hand, also, we have to understand that lockdown was very important. And say lockdown in the first wave, I think, uh, helped us in controlling the disease, say, I think, very fast. But now imposing the lockdown also has so many kind of the issues. Once uh, the, the government has to look into that. Because controlling disease is one aspect, but certainly we have to see about the, our economy, about the livelihoods, about the industry, about the transport, about the health services. So there are so many issues, say, before the government, because we are sitting at, say, individually sitting and discussing maybe on phone or maybe within the family, the situation is different. But when you look into from, say, the perspective of the government, they have to see all these kind of aspects and uh, say, I think, uh, wisely the decisions have been taken either by the state government or the center governments. And uh, now, of course, we are on the way to control this problem. Dear friends, the recent surge in the demand of liquid oxygen, life-saving medicines, and ventilators across the nation due to rising number of cases in the second wave did pose a great challenge for the country. No doubt about that, but we never expected that it will come with the, such a fast pace. It took, say, really a kind of momentum which affected the, drastically. Dear friends, and of course, such situation always when posing a challenge and then we come across the kind of gaps, 
say, present in our healthcare system, as there was paucity of medical infrastructure as well as lack of medical personnel. And when we, any situation which gives us a picture and then we come across and then immediately, immediately say there are action plan to overcome these kind of the problems. And uh, I think government has very wisely uh, say taking its step and uh, say trying their best as possible as they can. Policies, if we talk about, India being the second most populated nation in the world has emerged as an inspiration and example for the world to deal with the pandemic. The Indian government, central or state level, if you talk about, is working intensely and expeditiously to minimize the number of cases and consequences on daily basis and is taking all necessary steps to combat the challenges and threat posed by this growing invisible pandemic war involving public with the assistance of medical organizations, nurses, NGOs, police, police forces, including paramilitary and all others who are involved. In this direction, the government with quick response from the policymakers of India started nationwide tracing, testing and treatment the program popularly known as 3Ts. Dear friends, with the help of the pharma giants like Serum Institute of India and Bharat Biotech, India was able to develop its own indigenous vaccine named as Covishield and Covaxin and started its vaccination program by focusing on the frontline workers and giving them priority in the vaccination process. And the government of India has taken into consideration both allopathic and Ayurvedic medical knowledge and the Ministry of Ayus made commendable recommendations based on scientific publications for preventive measures and boosting immunity with special reference to respiratory health. And you, 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 you can think of that the kind of program that first the, the frontliners were vaccinated and of course the senior citizens, 65 and above, then of course, say, the persons who are taken uh, above 40, and then of course, 18 to 40. So this is how I think they have to go in a phased manner, in a well-planned manner. And now, of course, the government of India is uh, very much in, in a phase that the, even the children, say, uh, will be vaccinated in the time to come. And the uh, government of India has, uh, I think, announced that uh, by by December, say 108 crore, say the citizens will be vaccinated, and uh, I think uh, we 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 should we should have a confidence in the government, and uh, we should believe that, and certainly uh, the India India will progress in in that direction, and India will be able to control all these things. Dear friends, as a response to the crisis. Government of India announced the fiscal stimulus of 20 trillion rupees, which is an approximate 10% approximate of, say, the GDP. As I was telling you, in, in, before government of India, it's not only one thing that you have to control. Certainly, it's really important. But on the other hand, that how to take care of, say, the other issues related to the whole of the nation. The Food Corporation of India allotted 12.96 lakh metric tons of food grains under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana as an initiative of Government of India in its fight against COVID-19. Because many people might be leaving, might be losing their, say, jobs. Number I don't have, but yes, this is the situation and everybody knows that because we cannot move away from the truth. Along with this, provisions have been made to provide dry ration to all the people in the BPL category and those in need of that at present because of the one or the other disturbance. Equally important that the judiciary has also been working proactively during the pandemic in hearing the matters on an urgent and priority basis, dear friends. 
the government has diverted the supply of industrial oxygen because when there is the oxygen demand is increasing, they, they have diverted oxygen, industrial oxygen to the health sector in order to meet the demands of liquid oxygen. And now I think uh, there, there's no, say, scarcity of oxygen, say, in our country at, at this point of time. The ability of the country to produce low cost COVID-19 COVID vaccine has benefited low income countries that cannot afford expensive vaccines. Government of India produced it and there was a stage that they helped the other countries as well. And it's always, I think, if you could help someone, you should help. And now, of course, there is, because of the second phase, the situation is different and the government is taking every step, every step. Say, if you ask about me, and uh, uh, I, I would like to uh, take, take up this issue, say the matter a bit under that India with its diplomatic acumen has been successful in mobilizing international assistance for mitigating COVID pandemic. Dear friends, when we talk about mobilizing the international assistance, India got aid and assistance from all over the world in response to its vaccine Maitri program. All India strived to supply the vaccines to those nations who lacked the infrastructure. The world was witnessing another version of cooperative coexistence and the broader notions of humanity across the borders. All these steps were aimed at one target that is controlling the spread of virus and containing the pandemic. When India saw a sudden spike in number of positive cases, relief aid started pouring from all over the world for India in various forms, like in terms of cryonic, cryogenic liquid tanks, oxygen concentrators, ventilators, and so many other forms. Major nations like Russia, US, France, Germany are assisting India by supplying raw materials. Russia has also extended its helping hand by sending its indigenous Sputnik vaccines to India. The supply of oxygen for the moment is in short, so the emphasis now is on procuring oxygen. India will be getting 550 additional oxygen generating plants, 4,000 oxygen concentrate, concentrators, 10,000 oxygen cylinders, whose doses of remdesivir, uh, and antiviral drug favipiravir from Russia and UAE has also been earmarked for supply to India. Ladies and gentlemen, not only that, the Gilead Sciences, the American company that manufactures remdesivir has plans to provide four lakh doses free of cost say, to India. Another four lakh units of the medicine will be sourced from Egypt where Gilead has a production unit. Dr. Reddy will be manufacturing Russia's Sputnik vaccine, and it was announced that 60% of the Sputnik vaccines will be indigenously produced in India. And I think it will, it will, it will, the, the, the production will take very soon. And I think the situation will improve every month. Every month you will see that number of doses, say, produced are increasing, I think, several fold. India in the last 15 years, if we talk about, and more had, say, refused to accept foreign aid. I mean, in the last 15 years, India refused to, say, get the foreign aids, what I want to say, relying on its capability of raising resources internally. And that's always good that how long you will depend on, say, the others. Like, if I, you ask me personally, subsidies, I think we need to go away. We need to go away. And everybody, every citizen of our country need to think. And government may not be able to cut your subsidies. But I think if we have to become Atam Nirbar, which I personally feel, then each one of us will have to think, no, no. I think we won't need, won't take subsidy. We will work hard and this is how you can you can help in building the nation. But 
as, as it was decided in the last 15 years, but when the situation changes, the Foreign Secretary of India, Harsh Sringala, said, we have assisted other countries and we are getting assistance now. Referring to the comments of US President Joe Biden after their talks with Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji, the topmost priority is being given to meet the immediate requirements in terms of healthcare facilities in combating the second wave of COVID-19. This way, I mean to say that our government of India has been making every effort, every effort, say, so that, uh, say, we can save our people from this, say, fatal disease. Dear friends, Many countries such as US and Gulf nations have come forward and offered to help India as India has been proactive in helping other nations over the last one year. Dekhye, aap madad karenge to aapki madad karne ke liye log aa jayenge. Is liye ye Bharat pehle bhi karta raha hai aur ab bhi kiya hai aur piche jo vaccine bhi dusre deshon ko di hai, iske view alag alag logon ne liye hain lekin hame thoda sa baith ke constructively सोचने की जरूरत होती है कि क्यों ऐसा किया किस सिचुएशन में किया हम कर सकते थे हमने किया आज हमें जरूरत है तो हम दूसरों से ही मदद ले रहे हैं और हमें मदद मिल रही है क्योंकि हम वो कंट्रीमैन हैं वो और वो कंट्री है हमारा जो कि दूसरों की मदद कर सकता है इसलिए आपको भी मिल रही है कि यूएस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन लेड बाय प्रेसिडेंट बाइडेन has redirected its own order of AstraZeneca manufacturing supplies to India, which will allow India to produce over 20 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine. He has reversed his earlier decision. And that's only because of, say, government of India's diplomatic approach and the sharing and caring for other countries as well. India is also on its way to grant emergency medical clearance for those for the use of vaccines by companies like Pfizer, Johnson, and Johnson and Moderna. And once it is done, I think India will be a, I think, say, place where a lot of manufacturing can take place. In other words, I would like to say that India may act as hub of vaccine manufacturing because India has the capacity to do that. I'm sure, and you all should be confident that with the various, say, steps which government of India, the different state governments, say, at their own level, they have taken, with that, India will successfully emerge out from the current pandemic situation towards a better and brighter future. Learning from the struggles and crisis faced and strongly prepared for any such dreadful future event. Dear friends, we need to be very confident, very confident that yes, we will come out of this situation. But I would say that each one of us need to be very careful as well. And we need to take precautions that maintaining the social distance, using your masks, and of course, using sanitizers or wash your hands, say with soap, as many times as you could. Dear friends, once again, I extend my gratefulness to Sri Sina Saab for sparing his time and uh, say, I think making us the real situation about the various situations and the advices so that we can follow them. Because while we learn the reality, we know, know the reality, that's true through a person like, say, Mr. Sinha. I think our faculty, our students, our non-teaching staff, and others, those who have joined this webinar, they will they will develop a confidence they will develop a confidence they will come out of the panic situation and they will they will become the participant partner to the government of india's program or state government's program in in in, in controlling this pandemic disease 
I also congratulate the organizer, Department of Geography, for organizing this program on uh, mobilizing international assistance for mitigating COVID pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving an opportunity to share my view with, say, all of you, and of course, to welcome, say, Sri Sinazar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your informative, inspiring, and motivating words, and also for supporting and guiding us in this time of crisis. May I now request Dr. Manish Kumar, teacher in charge of geography department and convener of the lecture series to introduce our eminent guest speaker, Sri Shudendu Jyoti Sinha, sir. sir. Thank you, Dr. Gloria. Today's expert and renowned personality will be addressing all of us. Sri Sudendu Jyoti Sinha, sir, is having a strong academic background and vast knowledge and expertise in versatile fields. Apart from this, he is a senior civil servant and worked in different capacities in his professional career for which he has been recognized and awarded several times. In brief, I would like to present his profile for the participants. He is alumnus of one of the prestigious college of Delhi University, St. Stephens College, Delhi. He has experience of over 27 years in operations, infrastructure planning, coordination, management at field and policy making level in Indian railways with considerable success and appreciation. He perform his performance has been recognized and awarded twice at national level. He got national award for e-governance in 19 in 2019 and 20 for excellence in providing citizen centric delivery by Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances, Government of India. And he also got National Award for Outstanding Service, Ministry of Railway, Government of India in 2006 and thrice at the ministry level. He also served as Dean of the Indian Railway Institute of Transport Management, Lucknow, and General Manager, Wave Applications at the Center for Railway Information System. He has training and enrichment from Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, Germany, US, and a lot more. At present, he is advisor at Niti Ayo, the Apex Think Tank of Government of India. Now, I am respectfully inviting Sri Sudendu Jyoti Sinasar to deliver lecture on the topic mobilizing international assistance for mitigating COVID pandemic for our benefit in this hour of crisis which our nation is facing at present. Thank you. Thank you. Please, sir. Thank you, Professor Manish. Dr. Gloria, all the distinguished faculty heads of different schools, and of course, the most important vice chancellor, sir. It was really to start the day with a refreshing song, the Kulgeet, in which I picked up a word that was the Rash Nirma, construction, rebuilding, reconstruction of India, of the nation. That is what we are all committed to. My gratitude to Vice Chancellor Sir for almost giving a kind of 360 degree perspective on, on COVID and the way we have attempted to mitigate it, the way forward that is there. And of course, in the process, he was speaking quite high of the government where we have done well. Uh, this is something really great, sir, because it comes with years of discerning experience. Otherwise, government is there only for a kind of lashing and for the beating. So you say that government has not performed. And when the government has performed, then you know that there are so many others to take the credit for. But so nice of you, sir, your magnanimity, that you said that government has been doing well in so many aspects of governance, especially with regard to 
managing this pandemic. Now, let me come to the topic that is how we were trying to mitigate this pandemic, the sufferings during this pandemic, and what was the role that we played. To all the participants, let me just tell you that please do not try to locate any motivation or inspiration out of my lecture. It is not there. It is just not there. In fact, I'm also my, myself looking for lighthouses and inspiration among you all. But yes, this is a story that is worth speaking, certainly worth speaking, telling about, and probably worth listening also. So let me tell you that how exactly we were going around. Manish, Professor Manish, I hope I can share a short presentation, is it? Yes, sir, please. Oh, thank you. Is it visible, please? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. Lights are visible. Okay. So now let me take you to the entire way how we did it. To start with, it, on 24th, 25th of night of May, April, my CEO just called me into his chamber and said that that was the time, you know, it was very difficult. COVID was almost at its almost speaking up. So <clears throat> he called me to his chamber and said that, Sina, I want you to lead this fight against COVID-19 pandemic and mobilizing this international assistance from the front. And he did say that you can put your 29 years of service on one side, 29, 30 years of service on one side. And the experience, the impact, impact and the scale that you will have, you will come to know, you will experience while dealing with this particular thing will be, will be more than what you have accumulated over these years. So, you know, that was a kind of tee off. So I said that, okay, let's see how it goes up. We started the job, you know, initially there was tremendous confusion as it always starts with. Government of India at that time, they had made six empowered groups. These were the six empowered groups and group three, that is coordinating with private sector, NGOs and international organization came to be my specific responsibility. Of course, we had a role in other areas also, in other groups also, but these six principal empowered groups were supposed to be leading the entire nation out of this pandemic, out of this COVID. That was a kind of mandate to these six groups. Subsequently, they were expanded to 10 so that everything is covered, but then our role was confined to managing these international donations. So the mandate was clear. This was the mandate. The mandate was coordinating with private sector, NGOs, international organizations. 
CSOs, civil service organizations, and NGOs, non governmental organizations, United Nations, private sector resources were there. So basically, what we see is that two kinds of donations were coming. First was that government to government, what we call G2G, and then there was P2G, that is private to government. These two were the principal streams from which the donations were coming to us. Now we had clearly laid down that what we will accept. So when it started, MOHFW, Ministry of Health, Ministry of External Affairs, they laid down SOPs. They laid down a couple of pages of very simple SOPs uh, that uh, what will be the acceptance from them. That clearly delineated that what is going to be our priority. In the same list was mentioned that what will be the threshold value that in which we can accept them. And it was also detailed that what should be the technical specifications so that when they come to us, they are in a workable condition. So that was a kind of SOPs which were laid down. But let me tell you, the moment we started working, and the moment we also framed the SOP, in which we said that how exactly these donations should be coming to us, we saw that we were completely swamped by requests from all over the world. So like all the embassies, high commissions, consulates abroad, all the international donation agencies, international bodies, international organizations, the best of the private sectors and the chambers of commerce and industries abroad, all of them combined together, they wanted to find out, they wanted to get to us. Now, this was something really, you know, it was overwhelming for us. If I recollect for every, in every three minutes, once in three minutes, either I was attending a call or I was responding on my mail. So these two activities there, we, we set up a team. So I chose my own people from my own, uh, those who were efficient, and five of them were placed at Niti IO. We placed equal number with Ministry of Health. Similarly, we had our presence at the Red Cross. We also had our visible presence at the airport, and the ports so that customs and other clearances, those coordinations can always be done. You know what happens there of a, when a pandemic is of this magnitude, different government departments, all of them are meaningful. All of them have good contents, good intentions. All of them want to serve the country to, to perform the best. But the problem is that they, the, there is absence of synergy, how to synergize, how to orchestrate their initiative so that the challenges could be surmounted. That is one of the major, major tasks before us. And of course, Niti Aayog was there to perform it. So you see before yourself the list of some of the principal donors, principal, most important internationally agencies who wanted to get to us wanted to know that what exactly is our priority and give help us out. CSLs and NGOs, of course, they have got a principal role to play within the country and they are one of the, they have got the confidence of the community. So we could not have ignored them. We wanted to have a positive role of these people also. So EG3, that was our EG, Empowered Group, that reached out to more than 1.1 lakh NGOs and we appeal to them to assist the government in their efforts. Different activities were there, multiple of them. We mobilized CSOs at the field level and micro containment strategy, as Vice Chancellor has said, that it was necessary that the COVID appropriate behavior that ought to be reinforced and reiterated to the public again and again. That was one of the principal activities. So, there was an awareness campaign, mask awareness campaign, campaign with regard to social distancing, sanitization, and keeping on hygiene. That in which Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they chipped in, they were chipped in, and they started working. So 
we with the support of CSOs, NGOs and development partners, a lot of deliveries could take place, not only of medical uh, and medicine related items, but also of the uh, kind of food packets and sub supporting to the women, children and the vulnerable group, PPE kits kind of thing. Those were also there. Some of the works you can see here, the work done by CSOs and NGOs, some of the most important, meaningful, impactful NGOs, Akshay Patra Foundation, they served cooked meals all across, delivered essential grocery kits, Hemkun Foundation set up COVID relief funds and ration units, food packets were distributed in Delhi and NCR regions, Piramal Foundation, they were working. And let me inform you all, that within a sh very short span of time, most of the medical items, manufacturing facilities in the country, they ramped themselves up. And they most of them were working in 100 plus of their capacity. That was the level where, where most of these, most of these private units, whether somebody is making a cryogenic container, say Inox, for example, or maybe VRV, Asia Pacific in, uh, in uh, uh, say, Chittur district of Andhra Pradesh, they, whether they are there or a very small unit which is making just a soap. All these private facilities, I'm not talking of government units alone, even these private facilities, they wrapped up, they scaled up their production in a big, big way. And of course, government was always there to support them. Government was ready to support them with advanced funds and advance orders so they can be assured of. You know, during this COVID management, it was not the paucity of fund that was causing the problem. Fund was always there. India cannot internationally, we have got such a huge reserve of foreign reserves are there. So that is not the problem. The major problem was, the major challenge was that supply chain cannot be set up overnight in the country. So if something is, if a limited number of say concentrators can be produced in the country within a very short span of time, they cannot be tripled or quadrupled. So we had to depend on these international donations. And yes, power of youths, most of the participants who are there, I'm sure that many of them, um, uh, the students who are there, they can see that what the role of NCC, NSS, Sanic Board, NYKs, all of them were working. It was a kind, it was developing a kind of Jan Andalan, a public movement for awareness with regard to COVID appropriate behavior and also to provide assistance while maintaining your own standards of protocol, your own standards of sanitation and discipline. The chief secretaries, the state governments also, they were ready to, they were kind of helping us out. And let me tell you our engagement with private sector. Our private sector engagement, private sectors, you know, internationally, they are very, very profound presence is there and they're very rich also. So if you try to compare between the government to government and private to government kind of support you know, with, regard, with uh, respect to the value of donations, you will find that even from private to government, that support has been substantial. It is a very high scale. It is not less than, not much less than that of what support was coming from government to government. So you see that the most important donors, the most important partners, USISPF, United States and India Strategic Partnership Forum. Similarly, USIBC, International Business uh, Corporations, they are the ones, they are a kind of a group of chambers of commerce and industries of that country who rope their money in, who plug their money in, went uh, all around the world purchasing the items of our priority and then in turn donating. Even in, in the logistics support were being provided by many of those internationally, international couriers. For example, FedEx was there, Qatar Airways were there, and even government of India, once we realized that our support has to, we need support at a very fast pace, we just got our Air Force planes, aircrafts, 
and then our own domestic carrier India Airlines and with the tie up with other star alliance airlines, we started providing a kind of free support, free shipment support for getting these things into the country. So the, these key issues were addressed. Aid, you know, the challenge that was coming in the beginning was that there was only one, there was only one channel that was the our channel which was open for acceptance of donations. Now this was this was proving to be very very heavy for us also, for the donor also because there was a chance that we, there could be an element of delay. How to tide over this crisis? So what our CEO very rightly suggested that let us go for multiplicity of challenge, multiplicity of channels. Sorry, multiplicity of channels. So immediately we opened up multiple channels from private to government, private to Indian Red Cross, and private to state government. First two were already there. So private to state government, private to public sector, private to charitable institutions, and private to philanthropic organizations, philanthropic organizations to philanthropic organizations, these many channels were opened with a kind of mandate, a caveat, a, a kind of instruction that the for the end user, it has to be free. You can't be enjoying the government different customs and tax waivers, the integrated tax waivers, and then finally start selling the product in the market. It was completely that, okay, the end product, end, end beneficiary, the end patient to the patient, it has to be free. So with that caveat, we opened up multiple channels and then things started flowing in, in a big, big way. So you can see that private companies were supplementing oxygen capabilities. Oxygen capability was one of the major limiting factor, how to go it up in, an, in a very fast pace because oxygen is not only required for medical units, they are also required uh, uh, for medical facilities, they are also required, they have got industry applications also. And interestingly, they have got industry applications for those manufacturing units also that produce medical items. So it was a kind of vicious cycle, how to come out of it, how to ensure that oxygen is supplied, kept on being supplied to the hospitals, at the same time to the manufacturing units also, so that the balance can be, that trade-off could be maintained. LNT, they were working on a, on a war footing. They provided us four uh, PSA plants of class uh, plants, and they were installed in the, in the vulnerable areas. So the principle was very clear. Principle of our SOP was very clear that if a donor is approaching Niti Ayo, then Niti Ayo, what I used to do was very, very simple process. I used to assign one of our officials with him to provide him with a kind of end-to-end -end support. Now the donor doesn't have to run for anything. It is my official who will get all the approvals, all the clearances, he will get the shipment details, and till the last, in the sense that till the last point where he has to thank him that your thing, your donation has been received, it has been deployed at such and such place, that is also very important. Because you will see for this international donors and donors from Indian community abroad also, they are very much, they are equally interested in finding out that the, the donation which they have given, they have been meaningfully deployed, impactfully deployed at the right place or they are lying somewhere in the warehouse. That was very important. And when we started, when we started, let me tell you that after two or three days of hard work, the first news item was that that was ringing all around the country was that where are the 300 tons of supplies that came from abroad? Are they languishing at the airport? So that was the news item that came. So immediately we, we decided that it is time to recalibrate our strategy. Hitherto the idea was that we should keep on working and the so many methods that we are adopting, the, our deployment, our interaction with the media, 
that should be kept minimal. That was the approach. But once such negative news items started pouring in, then we decided that no, it's time to revise our strategy. And we went then whole hog completely with the with this media telling them that this is precisely what we are doing, sharing with them the photographs, tweeting them so that the whole world knows that if something has come, where has been where it has been deployed. And the principle was very clear that Niti Aayog will take the clearance from MEA so that the donor is a bona fide donor. He, there is no surreptitiously some, some wrong element, some internationally wrong agency is trying to push something inside the country. Then we will also, we are, we are also expected to Niti was supposed to get the technical specifications clear if need be from ICMR or if need be from Ministry of Health, then we had to ensure that if state's involvement is there, if state's involvement is there, then we take a certification that, uh, that the states will certify that it is going to the beneficiaries and it will be, they will be, it will be given free of cost. After all this tie up, we, we first found out that what was the shipment details, how it is being shipped, whether we are providing them shipment support, then another layer of approval was required. And then when the thing used to come to us, we used to go back to the Ministry of Health because they had the real perspective of what exactly the country's situation is, which state is more vulnerable, which is less, where the peak is there, and when the peak is likely to come, which has passed that plateau, all those things, information because they had. So we used to go to them for a kind of allocation. So allocation was done by the Ministry of Health and rest everything was supposed to be done by us. And finally it was dispatched. Many things, you know, I myself came to know during this time. These, you know, I have been a student of humanities. These technical things were never in my vocabulary. For the first time I realized that a ventilator, an upscale ventilator of Philips has got 11 accessories. I realized that ventilator, which prior physically looks to be so simple an item uh, in the hospital that has to be configured first, then installed, and then it has to be permanently monitored on a temporary on a on a periodic basis so that the systems are in place. All these new things where we were coming to know about. Suzuki had donated ambulances, Amazon were partners selling so many. Uh, they, was, uh, they were bringing oxygen concentrators, Philips, as I mentioned. As uh, Vice Chancellor said, I also mentioned that oxygen was a was the one of the most critical item that, that was causing problem for the country, how to ramp it up in an immediate way. That was, and you see for yourself, the pre-pandemic production was 900 metric tons and current production, but in a time span of say, one month, one and a half months, it is 9,500. So 10 times the production would be ran. And total LMO stock, LMO stands for liquid medical oxygen stock availability. You see what a fabulous availability is there. That is why this oxygen crisis we could sail through. But uh, initially, of course, the entire medical infrastructure was completely looked like crumbling. The whole world appeared to be walking towards the hospital. Where from so many beds? How to manage that? That was becoming a principal problem. And on the top of it, these critical items, whether it is BiPAP, NIV, ventilators, oxygen concentrators, oxygen cylinders, and some of the most critical medicines, remdesivir, as, as uh, uh, Vaishnava has said about Gilead, yes, Gilead are Swiss company and they have got units elsewhere. So how to get remdesivir, how to get uh, uh, tocilizumab. Then after suddenly we realized that the post COVID recovery period, that it is also getting into complications in the sense that sometimes it's black fungus. <coughs> that instance is also the, so amphotericin B and postanazole. Those new additions were made into the list of priority items. And let me tell you, the customs people, the finance people, all of them worked day in and day out to ensure that custom clearance is done within two to three hours. 
because the entire process that I mentioned you, it we were taking almost two to three days. In two to three days, from for the donor, everything was lined up, all clearances, all approvals, everything was available. And if shipment support is there, then the Air Force planes were told that you are supposed to be going to such and such place. I can give you an example. Our Air Force planes went to, we took a sortie. Uh, alone, they went to Hamburg and they brought four trucks with rigid fixed cryogenic containers. You see, tankers were imported from the, by the best of the Indian uh, 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 industries, Inox, IICL, Adani, Tata's Reliance, everybody was into the action support of uh, this uh, COVID pandemic. Steps taken by government of India to boost oxygen supply. We had, we needed cylinders, we needed transport support and technology, of course, so that it could be immediately ramped up. And that was the output that within a time, within such a short period of say, one to two months or maybe three months, we were able to scale it up to 10 times. International organizations and aid management, yes, United Nations also, they chipped in in a big way. The UNICEF was there, UNDP, Red Cross Society was, the National Red Cross Society, they were also, their cold chain equipment, how to create, monitor the vaccination centers. And, you know, we try to always compare our position with that of international. We say that, okay, it was done at such a fast pace in, say, Israel, or it was done in so fast in England, in UK. But we always forget that why it is that despite that, all our initiatives, they are sung, they are praised, they are appreciated internationally. The only reason being that the whole international community knows it all the more so well, that because of the complexity of democracy in India, by that democratic structure, I mean the federal structure, and number two, of course, because of the scale, the huge scale that is supposed to be there. For example, Israel has got a population of 90 lakhs, that is all. So they could do it overnight. It is not possible in case of India. And moreover, the number of vaccines that have been provided, if you see, it is phenomenal. And still the government is keen that, okay, after a short, uh, within a short time, we will be able to vaccinate each and every of the person uh, of the country, each and every citizen of the country. Similarly, the key highlights, over 2 crore 30 lakh, lakh individual units. By individual unit, I mean, suppose one face shield is there, I take it as a unit. But the principal units, if you want to see 27,000 oxygen concentrators, 16,000 high-end ventilators, all these things were given by the international community. You know, it was not a kind of dole. Most of these countries who have helped us are the countries whom we have also helped them in their times of crisis. It was not that they are giving us, we were going out with a begging ball. No, it was just a reciprocity. And with the way they were also giving us with a lot of respect, not trying to demean us in any way. Top international donors, you can see the best of the donors, oxygen concentrators, these are the priority items. And the top donors, you see, these are the top donors, the medical, the medicine, the pharmaceutical companies, they also, they were ready to, Roche, for example, uh, Roche is the one that uh, that uh, makes this uh, tocilizumab. They also gave a lot of support to uh, country and the kind of ventilators, you know, the, the quality of things that they were seen, sending to us, they were not useless things. They were upscale. So you could, you could have the feel that all these countries, they are trying to help us in a in a real sense, they are having that feel for it. And if I may give you an example, I'm, I'm, this is a university. Students from, say, Stuttgart University of Germany, Indian students, they collected money, they purchased something, and they gave it to us. So you, have, you can see the scale. While on one hand, Biden administration is there, and on the other hand, there is small little student community that is trying to help the country out and we were there to support all of them to respect their sentiments to let to thank them to express our gratitude and thank them that their 
that the items which they have given us has been gainfully employed. Technology in aid management is there because then everybody wants to know with so much of flow, people want to know that where exactly that thing is coming. Now, every time they cannot be on communication channels, it has to be a soft platform had to be developed. And even the thing has to be fully automated. What, where the thing is traveling, where the donation item is moving forward, a GPS, a real time tracking of consignments through GPS system were put up in all the tracks so that we know that where exactly something is going. And in case some assistance is required, it could be immediately given. Similarly, you can see that technology was very critical. It had a very critical role to play. It came to our rescue. Then only we were able to manage such a massive, we had a dashboard. We could see that which states have been given what, which state needs to be given now. And everything was available. Then only Ministry of Health could work. Similarly, we knew that each and every stage of donation, we knew that where exactly it is flowing through, what assistance is required from us, all those things were available with the help of technology. End-to-end -end support was available. And institution up to the consumption, up to the point of consumption, it was available. For example, I can tell you, if Amazon has given 100 ventilators, if those 100 ventilators have landed in Chennai, they have been configured at Bangalore with the permission of DRDO Delhi, if they have been decided to be allocated to DRDO Haldwani, and at Haldwani, they have been configured and installed, and the patients have started using them. So, so many steps are there that, that one could track, one could find on a daily basis on the portal, on the, on the, on the technology platform that was available to us. These were the principal channels, and I, as I mentioned, government to government, PTG, and through states and CSOs were there. It was fully digital, transparent, and end-to-end -end process was there. Priority was accorded to the states where high case burden was there. And you know, many a times, problem is that even if you are doing the good things, rather even if you are doing whatever you do, there are 10 persons there to tell you that what you are doing is wrong. You have to come out of that sticky position and you have to, the moment you have got a confidence you, that you are, your confidence is reinforced in your initiative, you have to keep on doing it or else you will lose the track of it. You cannot be waylaid by so many statements, so many things that keep on coming. It has been a wonderful, wonderful teamwork that was there. And with the help of this teamwork alone, that we were able to do it. Now, uh, uh, at the end of it, let me tell you all that, uh, of course, it was uh, it was for me. I spoke to my uh, to a couple of places to before the all the senior officials of government of India, and I did tell them that for me it was a lifetime experience. And uh, I still recollect that the caller tune, the message that comes in the on our mobile is that atyant avashyak hone par hi ghar se niklein. For me, it was atyant avashyak hone par hi ghar me jai. So it was all confined to the office all these days, almost one and a half months. We were in the office, one month plus we were in the office. Now almost 70% it is getting over. Government's viewpoint is that we should be gradually tapering off these donations for me. We are a strong country. We are a, our systems are very strong. Maybe we were, we were overwhelmed. And it also gives us a kind of, uh, if in a way forward, if I might say, that it is equally important that we concentrate on all the three aspects. One is the medical facilities, treatment facilities, if I might say. And the second is, of course, the manufacturing of medical items and related pharmaceutical items. That is the second thing. And the third is, of course, the resource base, the human resource, the doctors, the paramedical staff, the sanitary workers, all of them have to be, uh, all three of them have to be um, a kind of given focus. It has already come to the focus of the country. And I'm sure in times to come, we will see uh, a better, uh, a better 
health infrastructure. So when I see uh, with a hindsight, I can only say that the entire uh, history of this century, it will be seen with the perspective that COVID was the watershed. So we will be talking about pre-COVID and we will be talking about say post-COVID. And of course, I'm so happy that I was a part of, uh, uh, I was leading the team <laughs> that was managing these donations and to wind up, if I might say that there is a wonderful line from Amrita Pritam. Uh, the English translation is that uh, the memories are made of eternal beads, eternal specks. She says further that I will collect those beads again, put them into a thread. This was one such thread for all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for such an elaborate and enriching lecture about the strategies taken by the government of India in these challenging times of the pandemic. We are indeed grateful to you for accepting our invitation and sparing time from your busy schedule. Thank you once again, sir. May I now request Dr. Santesh Kumar Singh, Associate Professor in the Department of Political Science and also convener of the lecture series to give the concluding remarks and vote of thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gloria. Thank you for inviting me uh, to which I have all this uh, lecture series, which are important for us to understand why that is important. Definitely, I would like to mention that. Nowadays, we are listening a lot of things around us in the uh, crisis, like in this time of pandemic, against the government, what government is doing, why government is doing, government is failed, it has been failed, and with that kind of statement we are listening every day. But whatever we have heard in last one hour, after listening that, we can analyze, we can assess what government has done and how government has performed during this pandemic crisis time, right? So, on one hand, we are saying we are failed. On the other hand, we are witnessing the result of that effort. Like within one and a half month, the number of cases has reduced like anything. It was like four uh, lakh cases. Now it is like one lakh cases. So, it's going down every day. So we have to recognize the effort of those people who have you know, contributed against this, this you know, COVID-19 or against this pandemic. One point at the same time, I would like to mention here, nowadays everyone is talking about like why government is failed, why government is failed, it hasn't addressed. A lot of people are not able to get you know, bed seats, beds in hospitals and uh, we are knowing like government is giving its best i'm just telling its best why i'm telling its best we have you no know, collected a number of things from abroad a lot of people are saying in government have you no know, today i was watching news new news deputy cm of delhi Sisulia, Mani Sisulia are telling our government has you no know, sent all the vaccines to abroad. It has sold vaccines to abroad, you know, foreign countries. But that is not truth. We are part of global community. We are committed for help, for assistance. We, we need assistance from external countries. At the same time, it's our duty to give assistance to external powers, external countries, external nations. In the case of this pandemic, we are witnessing India has done its part, its bit, not much. I'm not saying whatever happened across the globe, India is the only country, country doing that. We are part of COVAX. So, when those are whatever we have done, we have done under that COVAX mission of WHO, right? So, whatever India has done because of you no know, its accountability towards global community, accountability towards global, you know, uh, uh, cooperation. So, we have to understand whatever now we are getting. We are getting because of that assistance, what we have done, what we did in past, we are just getting now. So 
one point under one important point I'm mentioning here, 2003 onwards, we have refused of taking any kind of aid or assistance from abroad. But in this time of pandemic, we are accepting, even we are requesting countries to provide us because basic amenities like concentrator, concentrator uh, drugs, all these kind of stuff. But why we need such kind of thing? Because this is just like tsunami. This is just like you know any disaster. Never, nobody never know how it will grow up and how it will go you know, beyond the control. And that is what happened. We should stand by, we should stand with government, not to go against government, not to basically criticize government. That is what happening in the case of Israel. We can have no example like recent you no know, conflict between Israel and Palestine, how the you know, uh, Prime Minister of Israel gets support of opposition parties. All the opposition parties stand with basically Netanyahu and they support it unconditionally. This is time, war time, we are with you. This pandemic is also a war time. Now we need support from each one of you, each one of us, like political parties, individuals, PSO. Sir, I have done my research on global health governance in the United Nations University, International Institute of Global Health. Somewhere having World Bank, US, US, the world is that. Now we are un the same and the few other important components within semi periphery which which are also important within that developing countries are there other international jo world bank other agencies hai that comes under that to semi periphery and in periphery n number of actors are there and the same kind no concept we may apply in this after looking at your slides what i have realized we are doing the same kind of thing like we in core what we are having is government Government is struggling. Government is doing a lot of things. In semi periphery, we are having state government, PCUs, you know, private sector. In periphery, we are getting a lot of support from n number of other actors. So this is what we have to understand. You no know, criticizing government's action is very easy task. And political parties are doing here in India. They don't care how much people are dying, where uh, people are dying, how, how they are dying, they don't care. What they care about is getting maximum number of vote because they are performing just like business class, you know, business groups, like companies, factories, what they do for their benefit, their profit. In this time of crisis, political parties, opposition parties are doing the same. For example, sir, abhi aap tau, kumbh ka mela hua, maha kumbh ka, wahaan bahu sare tent lage, wo tent wahi pe dab gaye. उसकी फोटो खींची गई तीन साल पहले की और सर्कुलेट किया गया कितने लोग दफना दिए गए हजारों लाखों लोग और हम लोग विश्वास भी कर लिए क्योंकि जो मीडिया देता है हम वही देखते हैं दिस इज व्हाट दैट इज नॉट द न्यूज गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल्स में बेड जो है इन्होंने ऑक्युपाई किया मैनिपुलेट करके जो कि सीट नहीं मिलना चाहिए था जो बीमार नहीं थे उनको सीट दिया गया Hundred or hundred cases are there. Why they are doing? They just want to defend Modi government. They want to defend government in this time of crisis. So we need to understand because we all are, you know, uh, uh, intellectuals. We belong to a very, you know, elite class in terms of, you know, reading books, articles, papers, watching televisions, newspapers. So we have to be careful in circulating such kind of news, such kind of, you know, any uh, uh, thing. So in that context, sir, with these words, I, I will uh, definitely come to that. Uh, major part of this uh, webinar that is vote of thanks. A lot of things you have already discussed, sir. So not going to elaborate that, but truly saying I am personally sir thanking you because I have done research in this. I am I'm going to write a paper on your th this presentation. How government has struggled and how government has dealt with this problem of COVID-19 successfully. I am just quoting this successfully. And everyone is predicting wave three that is going to come. But I'm saying I don't believe in that. Nobody knows maybe that that come that will be wave three, what wave, wave four, wave five, maybe because that is pandemic. We never know. Somebody long way back said post pandemic era, but that is never going to happen post pandemic era. It will remain with us. It will always be with us. We have to survive with us. But the solution will be medication, drugs, and the facilities and the abilities and the willpower we are having to fight against such pandemics. This is what we have to understand. People are talking about the same. What, what they don't know, even common people, sir, they don't know what is the difference between epidemic and pandemic. 
but everyone is talking about government is fail government is fail government is fail but they need to know those they should understand they should go into that what is different between, between epidemic and pandemic and normal health situations health crises this is not normal this is just like you know crisis other crises are like well uh, for a few days back we had that's no uh, tufan aaya tsunami aaya abhi gujarat mein aaya odisha mein aaya bangal mein aaya to ye aise hi hai it has come hame nahi pata tha a lot of people are believing वैक्सीन बाहर भेज दिया हमने एट दैट टाइम वी ऑल आर अवेयर अबाउट दैट कैसे हमने केसेस को रिड्यूस किया हमारे यहाँ केसेस सर नंबर आप थाउजेंड्स में आ गए थे बहुत कम नंबर थे सडनली इट हैज स्पाइक तो किसी को नहीं पता क्या होगा लेकिन गवर्नमेंट जिस दिशा में जा रही है आई एम डैम श्योर सर आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर की सर आने वाले श्योर टाइम में हम लोग सेफ रहेंगे सिक्योर रहेंगे आज वर्ल्ड का सबसे ज्यादा वैक्सीनेशन करने वाला देश बन गया हम सर US is one of the biggest producer of vaccination vaccines but whatever they have done we have already done that aaj kya tha hame kya tha we are known as the hub of pharmacy of world india is known as hub of pharmacy whatever medicines they sell in the price of 1000 dollars we sell that the same medicine in 300 400 dollars so the difference is there so medical tourism we are attracting no global community towards us so hamara success to already hai तो हमें यह कहना कि हम फेल हो गए क्रिटिसाइज करना मुझे लगता है वो अपने आप मेरे इंट्रोस्पेक्ट करने की जरूरत है वो ये समझने की जरूरत है क्या आप वाकई आंख बंद करके एनालाइज कर रहे हैं क्या दिस इज क्राइसिस टाइम एक पॉलिटिकल पार्टी बता दे यहाँ पे जो बोला हो कि आई एम विथ यू इन दिस टाइम ऑफ क्राइसिस वी आर विथ यू इन दिस टाइम ऑफ क्राइसिस नो पोलिटिकल पार्टी स्टेटमेंट अगेंस्ट नो सॉरी इन फेवर ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑल द पोलिटिकल पार्टी स्टेटमेंट अगेंस्ट गवर्नमेंट ऑल द टाइम इन दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट केजरीवाल एवरी डे चेंजेस इट्स स्टेटमेंट दिस स्टेटमेंट वन डे ही से समथिंग अदर समथिंग एल्स इन द केस ऑफ सिंगापुर वी ऑल हैव सीन हाउ गेट ह्यूमिलेटेड ऑन कंट्री गेट ह्यूमिलेटेड बिकॉज ऑफ वन स्टेटमेंट ऑफ चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ दिल्ली सो सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स शुड बी डिस्करेज सर दैट विल बी गुड फॉर अस विद दीज वर्ड्स आई एम कमिंग टू वोट ऑफ थैंक्स सर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सर प्रोफेसर आशीफ सर रिस्पेक्टेड श्री सुधेंदु ज्योति सिन्हा सर आवर मोस्ट वैल्यूएड इनवाइटेड गेस्ट कलीग्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स इट्स माय प्रिविलेज टू हैव बीन आस्ड टू प्रपोज एंड वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ऑन दिस ओकेजन ऑन आई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पॉलिटिकल साइंस एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियोग्राफी एंड द इंटायर सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हरियाणा एंड ऑन माई ऑन बिहाफ एक्सटेंड अ वेरी हर्टी वोट ऑल फॉर ग्रेसिंग ओकेजन एंड शेयरिंग विथ एस योर प्रीसियस टाइम to begin with the first of all i would like to express my regards and thanks to our honorable vice chancellor sir under whose able leadership the whole event is being organized because of his obvious efforts and motivational approach coordination among various stakeholders in eg and smooth his vast experience and continuous guidance has helped us a lot so Preparing his today's topic on very pertinent topic of present times, sir, you have made us understand the basic, the root of this crisis, and also the effort has the effort effort given by government to uh, fight against this COVID crisis. Thank you, sir. Sir, we all are inspired by your great words. Thank you again, sir. Now I would like to extend my hearty thanks to Professor Ajit Singh Dalal. program coordinator dr vinod kumar program director who has program director of this lecture series put their best efforts to manage and organize everything related to the first inaugural lecture of the series their guidance at every stage made us easy to plan and coordinate among various departments and finally i would like to thank this opportunity to place to to place on record our hearty thanks again to honorable bc sir for his support guidance and motivation he has extended to all of us in organizing online lecture series from the bottom of my heart i pull all the <coughs> honorable dignity and colleagues who have taken out their precious time to make this event a great success i'm thankful to all the members of the organizing committee who have worked directly or indirectly to conduct the event perfectly and smoothly i would like to thanks it team for their prompt control and provision of the electronic facilities well uh, an event like this cannot happen over we have been fortunate enough to be backed by team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues scholars and students of the department and university who have enthusiastically supported us in organizing the event and looking forward 
the same for the upcoming lectures of the series. Thank you very much to everyone. Thanks a lot again, sir. Thanks a lot to all. Thank you. Gloria Ji, Dr. Gloria. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I would now request IT Sen to play the national anthem before we conclude today's program. IT Sen. Ah, Jaden sir, please, please. Sir, national anthem play करना है क्या? हाँ हाँ national anthem करना है. Janagana mana adhina yaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Ravida Uttala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uttala Jagadhi Taranga Tava Shubha Nami Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayakra Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.